Bible says the Father looks for those who worship Him in truth and spirit. God is raising up a worship. Music that's never been released like it is being now. See, without God's presence, we're nothing. And I don't care if you know the word inside now. You can memorize the word and still go to hell. Hello. It's the presence of God that is everything. Everything. When I was a drug addict for over 20-something years, when I had my visitation from the Lord, the first thing I realized was His presence I was looking for. I looked it for in the dope, the fame, the money, and everything else. I was looking for something for fulfillment, but it was God's presence that I sought the whole time, not knowing it. But the enemy knows how to play games with us. He knows how to put something in front of us so that we grab hold of those things. I can't tell you how many t times I've ministered to someone and they tell me they're not an addict, but they got a li liquor or alcohol in their hand. I said, man, it's nothing but liquid dope. Don't tell me you're not an addict. Well, I only do it on weekends. You're an addict. You got a spirit of addiction. And that spirit will tear you up eventually. And the Bible says something very powerful. Those who practice such things will not enter the kingdom of God. So God is trying to quicken up, straighten up, shaking up, and get things right now. We are, look, we've just entered a new year. Does anybody know about that? Amen. We're coming to, now the end of the Jubilee, God brings judgment. He's judging his people. You got 10 days to repent. Then you got atonement. And those who do not get things right can go through a whole year of judgment. God is raising up warriors. Those who are not a spiritually warfare. There's training in the spirit. This is not about a religious operation. Jesus never came to bring religion. He's a military leader. He's the host of all the military. This is a military operation, not a religious one. You were sent into this earth to be born, to be rescued out of the matrix, and born into the spirit of eternity. But he won't force that on anyone. He sends the invitation. I rejected that invitation multiple times. And when I finally accepted it, I had a visitation totally delivered me and healed me. And in that visitation, I realized that his presence superseded anything I ever desired in my life. It still does. It's his presence. Without his presence, we're nothing. How do you get his presence? Praise and worship. Forsake not to assemble. We need the presence of the Lord. Because the presence of the Lord will bring the fear of the Lord, the reverence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. That's why we worship. I know some of you kept thinking in your mind, man, there's too many songs here. When's this last? Is this the last song? It's because you ain't dead yet. You got to die to yourself. That means something's in you. You mean I'm a believer? I, can have, I can't have a demon. Oh, where do you think they go? They're looking for destroying. They come to steal, kill, and destroy, right? Oh, hallelujah. In James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Okay, so who's, what about, if you're blessed, if you endure temptation, what happens if you don't? You're cursed. Hmm. Think about that. We curse ourselves. The enemy says traps or you curse yourself. Once there's a curse, the enemy has access to you. And he doesn't come to you that day and say, hey, I'm going to curse you today so I can destroy your life. No, he waits you build it up. And then he comes and destroys it bit by bit by bit. So blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desire. That's wants. That's emotions, feelings. And enticed. Wow. Then 
when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full blown or full grown, brings forth death. Again, sin is the presence of evil. We always looking at what we've done. Sin is the presence of evil. It's sin automatically. Sin's presence is evil. Okay, presence of evil is sin. When they entice you, they entice you through thought, through emotion. They're trying to entice us through technology, the news media, all kinds of things, music, whatever it is they're trying to entice you with. It's so that they can get your attention, and once you agree with it, they can access you. And once they access you, then they cause you to commit an act. It's called transgression. Now that transgression, once that act is done, brings what we call an iniquity, which is a curse. And it comes on you and your family line until it's broken. That's why addiction is a curse come down the family line. If you ever go to the doctor, the first thing they ask you is, what's in the blood? What's in your family line? They ask you, is there heart disease, diabetes, whatever. It's the same thing in the spirit realm. What's in your family line? And it will recycle every third and fourth generation until it's broken. We have a booklet called the Penetrating Prayer Booklet. In it, it breaks the curses off. You must speak it because there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Unless you want to continue to repeat what your forefathers have done. You know, it's amazing because I, I, I kept seeing, when I was growing up, my aunts and a couple of my cousins, they had... Uh, problems with their legs and became crippled. And after I got born again and everything, and I was, one day I was talking to my brother, and I said, man, what, what's with the, that side of the family that's so crippled? He says, I don't know. I said, well, what happened to Grandpa, you know? What happened to, come to find out, my grandfather married his cousin. Brought a curse on the family line. Well, my wife and I, we went to prayer and broke that curse off. We repented for incest. I didn't know that. So that my children wouldn't receive that. Do you understand the same thing with addiction? Now, you, your grandfather and grandmother might not have been addicts, but someone before them was addicts. And it came down the family line, whatever it runs. So you are what you inherit until it is broke. That means our DNA needs to be changed. We need to get a new one. We need to get a brand new. That's why God says you must be born again. Born again. I could never understand that. Then after I got born again, I saw all these people walking around with Bibles that were hypocrites. And I said, Lord, I don't want to read the Bible. I don't want to be like that. I can hear you. I can see what you want me to do. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And he said, no. I want you to learn the Bible. It took him weeks to convince me to start reading the Bible. And then the Holy Spirit came and taught me. Because he was my mentor, my friend, my tutor, and my best friend. And he'd wake me up every morning, and he'd take me to the throne room of God. The Holy Spirit is available for everyone, so before you do anything, invite him. The Bible says, seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Invite him, ask him. Don't be silent anymore. It's, it's not time to be quiet, it's time to be seekers. Amen? It's time to be seekers. So we see desires is the area of want, even lust. Lust is living under, living out under satanic torment. When people lust, it's an overwhelming desire, isn't it? Addiction is nothing but a lust. It's an overwhelming desire. You know, people call it a disease. It's not a disease. It's a demon. People that smoke, it's a demon. It's the spirit of nicotine. We cast them out all the time. Now, smoking isn't going to make you go to hell. Hello? But it sure ain't going to be. It's just another demon that's going to invite more and more and more. You're going to still have troubles. I mean, how can you go out and witness to somebody with a cigar in your hand and a beer bottle? Or, hey, I know Jesus. Oh, really? Get free. Jesus brought freedom, not bondage. And, and then the, the whole thing is that you've got to learn warfare. You've got to learn how to get in the spirit so you can battle. Or you become a casualty. We've seen many people fall left and right. And things are happening tremendously right now. Matthew 6, 24.
No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. And that's what this is about. This is where there's the dismantlement of the economic system, of the Babylonian world system. We are entering it. And God is exposing those that serve money, this corrupt, deceitful riches, serve those monies and serve the darkness that promotes such wickedness. And those who serve him, we are entering it, it will be exposed, and they'll be destroyed, and we will prosper. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, Now godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing with these, we shall be content. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snare, and into many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown men into destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith, and their greediness and pierce themselves through with many sorrows. But you men or women of God, flee these things, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, and patience, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold of eternal life, to which you also were called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. The world system that is controlled by the Babylonian system promotes money as their God and provision. The Bible tells us that you cannot serve God in mammon. So he's talking about two things that are battling one, God and money. They battle one another, God and money, because the whole world system controls the money system. But we're about to see the dismantlement of deceitful riches. We are going to see it. It's going to begin this year. In fact, it's beginning today. Many things are going to begin to expose. You'll see an escalation, build, 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 of the deceptive riches of the Babylonian system will begin to crumble. Even stocks and all kinds of things will begin to crumble. But the righteous will prevail. Things will, things will crumble around you, but if you're in position, you've got nothing to worry about. Nothing to worry about. Amen? Oh, the love of money is the root of all evil. It causes people to stray from their creator and more trust in self. Amen? There's a fine line in that crossover. There's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with being wealthy. There's nothing wrong with it. If you're not building your empire, you're building his. See, he's going to release the money because we're in the second win right now. The first one is still exposing. The second one is releasing provision. He's going to dismantle the wealth of the wicked. Those that are involved in human trafficking and all kinds of other things, their corporations and their assets will be removed. And they will not enter the new era. But only that is righteousness. For a time. We don't know how long it's going to be, but I believe that we're going to enter. It's going to seem like chaos outside. But you and I are going to enter a time of plenty. And the purposes of the time of plenty is to provide, just like the Joseph ministry, places where people can come to, people will know the truth, where they can get fed and clothed. There are supernatural things being released even now. Witty inventions that will blow you away. How do you create water? We know a company that knows how to. It's going to be released any moment. There are so many things that is happening. It's going to change the world, all of this new technology. Because God is giving people witty inventions for just a time as this. But again, there will be a dismantlement of the deceitful wealth of riches. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, in verse 1, But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come. Are we seeing that? For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, 
proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, and having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Sounds like the Democratic Party and all the other Antichrist parties. Hello? And all these individuals that hold seats and positions. Look at Politicians do not serve you. They serve corporations now. Yeah. That's why Jesus is going to kick them all out of office. Hallelujah. Lovers of self. Lovers of money, not Jesus. It is maximizing to a level of destruction now. They're exposing themselves more and more and more. In Mark chapter 4. So you might have come for a specific reason, but God had a special message for you. <laughs> he wants to prepare you. He doesn't want you to miss the opportunities. Look at his love for me and you is unconditional. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't change. But the enemy always wants to tell you, oh man, I, can, I can't go to God. People run to the phone instead of the throne. Even believers do. God wants to raise up. He wants to break that wimpy spirit off of people and raise it up to become warriors and come out of that religious spirit and come in the place of freedom to know him, to seek him. In verse 13, it says, And he said to him, Do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? He said, The sower sows the word, and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likes, likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And they have no root in themselves. Why? Because they're not staying maintained connected. And so endure only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution or any troubles arouse, for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word. Finally somebody hears. But here's the problem. The cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desire for other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. And you got to ask yourself, what is your priority? Are you in divine order? If he's not your first priority, you're out of order. Amen? I've always heard preachers preach, it must be God, family, children, and then job. I got another word for you. It's God, 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 and God. Because when it's always daddy, he, everything falls into place. You ain't got to worry about nothing. Well, what about my children? They're taken care of. See, when you're in divine order, your kids will be protected. I don't care where you are and what's going on. Hallelujah. But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit, some 30, some 60, and some a hundredfold. Deceitful riches, wealth, possessions, yachts, all of these things. Not, not about kingdom building, it's about selfish building. They promote schemes, riches. I mean, every time you turn on the TV, let's get quick rich, you know. Hey, man, just do this and you'll be rich in two, two hours. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you got to be careful because everything is about, you know, when you and I were growing up, and maybe our parents didn't know better. I know mine didn't. You got to be somebody. What was being somebody? Having money. That's what it was all about. You are somebody if you have money. You ain't nobody if you don't have money. You need to get an education. You need to get a job. You need to do this. You need to do that. You need to be somebody. Man, we, are, we were already somebody. We're children of the Most High God. Then God puts a desire in us to do certain things so we can fulfill the function and position us to be a rescue to humanity. In Matthew 26, and verse 14,
And one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver Jesus to you? Hmm. That same Babylonian system was alive then and is still alive now. He was getting ready to <laughs> come against his Lord for money. You know how many people have taken out a position for money? They think that if they work more hours and save more money, it's going to help them later. You know that God can do anything at any time? When you have the faith, and you get faith by staying connected, being filled. See, faith is the currency of heaven. That's why so many people don't have faith because their only faith is in themselves and they ain't no faith at all. They trust in their abilities and their strengths and their bank accounts. That ain't going to get you going. God can do anything instantly. See, your faith must be in Him. Does everybody understand? Praise God. So what did He do? He said, what are you going to give me so, so I can... And betray my Lord. We'll give you 30 pieces of silver to bring him into our hands. So from that time forth, he sought opportunity to betray Jesus. For money. Acts 8.14, please. Now, when the disciples who were at Jerusalem heard that... Uh, Samaria had received the word of God. They went, they sent Peter and John to them who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. You know, receiving the Holy Spirit is a command from God. In fact, he told the disciples, he said, look, don't leave the upper room till you are baptized in the Holy Ghost. And one of the evidence of the baptism in the Holy Spirit is the gifts of the Spirit, tongues, prophecy, so forth. And don't tell me it was only for them. No, it's for everyone. I'm a, I'm a living proof of that because I never read the Bible. And I had a visitation with the Lord. And, and when I was abducted, literally abducted, this cloud of glory came over me. My hands went straight up in the air. I felt like a soda bottle went <laughs> boom. And this funny language started flying out of my mouth. I had no control. None. Next thing I knew, I was in the presence of the Lord, and I realized, man, I love this. In fact, I said to the Lord, if this is death, I want it. Now, my mouth was still speaking tongues, but we were communicating spirit to spirit. I said, if this is death, I want it. I said, nope, not now. Verse 16. For as of yet he has had fallen upon none of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. That's water. But there's another baptism that is required. It's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So you can connect. The Bible says when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, you will speak with new tongues. You will cast out devils. That's why people have so much trouble in their house. See, there's, you can't see beyond the physical unless you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Because you get new eyes to see. Or else the scales still lay there. It says, then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. Amen. Here's some cash. Get me baptized in the Holy Spirit. Can I do that too? How much does it cost? Death to yourself. Saying, give me this power also that anyone on, on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. And Peter said to him, your money perish with you because you thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. But that is the mindset. That's what the enemy's mindset is everywhere. Everything is about money. And don't get me wrong, we need to have some money. But let me tell you, God provides. One day he sent me to a, a, a luncheon. Or breakfast. You know. And I only had $1,000 in our account. He said, I want you to write a $1,000 check to this ministry. Well, the guy didn't show up. I thought, oh, well, I definitely missed the Lord. And then as soon as I 
Soon as then, I thought that meeting was ending, he comes walking in. I said, oh, snap. <laughs> so he sat there and I said, listen, man, the Lord told me to bless you. Here's a $1,000 check. It was on the Saturday. That Monday, somebody came by my house, knocked on my door and said, the Lord told me to give you 4500 bucks." So you cannot limit God. You can't. You got to have the faith. You got to increase the faith. The Bible says praying in tongues increases your faith. See, the, the, the devil doesn't want you the gifts of the Spirit because then you're going to outwit him. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> you can't buy spiritual things with money. You can only buy it with faith. Faith is the currency of heaven. Amen? Matthew 21, verse 12. Then Jesus went into the temple of God. And what did he do? He drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. See, God is overturning the money changers. The money changers, they're controlling the world by money, 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 money. I mean, our own government prints all they want. Yeah, they print everything. They don't even have the gold to back it. Let's just print it. Heck, they should have just given it to us. We could have put it on copiers. Then he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. See, the Babylonian system is going to crash. The dismantlement of deceitful riches will come down. And you will see it. And Proverbs 23, 1 through 8. When you sit down to eat with someone wealthy or a ruler, consider carefully what is before you. And put a knife to your throat if you're a man or woman given to appetite. And do not desire his delicacies, for they are deceptive food. Remember, what you agree with, you accept. From words from other people. What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is be what you become. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding. Cease. Did enemy ever put a desire in you to buy something? To get a loan? Man, I just really love, I got to have that. And you go out and get a loan. I've had people tell me, man, I got blessed with a car, $3,000 a month. I said, that's no blessing? That's a curse, you idiot. What's the matter with you? Did you get any counsel on it? No, I just, I just felt it. <laughs> you felt it all right. Misled by emotions. Those will kill you every time. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser. I call him compromiser. Nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says you, but the heart is not with you. And the morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. <laughs> Deceptive desires of food. In other words, what you're agreeing with is food. See, spiritually, it's called, you're eating it. That's why Jesus says, whoever eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood is eternal life, because that's spiritual food. Amen? And now, his flesh is the word of God, and his blood is the spirit. That's what you drink. In Proverbs 28, in verse 20, The faithful man will abound with blessings. Faithful. That's a person filled with faith. See, faith is your connection. It's your connection to the throne room of God. It's your connection to heaven. Faith is like the umbilical cord. Your connection. But when there's no... So if it's not connected to heaven, it's connected to something else. A faithful man will abound with blessing, but he who hastens to be rich will not go unpunished. You know, the world system has used people as slaves. They're willing to sacrifice every human for their own gain and their power to fill their own pockets. And we've been 
enslaved long enough. God is getting ready to do a Red Sea moment. Things are about to happen. Things are changing. We've entered the new year. Yesterday and today, is today the 25th? Yeah. So we are, it's, it's, it's fulfillment of Jubilee. And it's also the Feast of Trumpets, which is also known as Judgment. And then Tabern uh, Atonement will be in 10 days. See, when you begin to know the Feast of the Lord, everything revolves the seven Feasts of the Lord in the Tabernacle of God. Everything. When you begin to understand that Jesus fulfilled the first three feasts when he died on the cross, went to hell and rose. That opened up the three chambers of the tabernacle. Then he poured out his spirit. Only he can fulfill the feast on the day of Pentecost. The next feast to be fulfilled is the Feast of Trumpets. That's the removal of the body of Christ from the earth. Don't miss it. I hope you have a ticket. Then the Feast of Atonement. Remember, he can only fulfill the feast. They recycle, but he knows when he's supposed to fulfill it himself. Hallelujah. A faithful man is filled, will be blessings. In Proverbs 22, in verse 4. By humility and by the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. Riches, honor, and life. Because if a person can fear the Lord. Now, the fear of the Lord is not kind of horror. But for the world it might be. But for me, you knew it's reverence, honor, and respect. That is the fear of the Lord. Reverence, honor, and respect. We respect his presence. We respect his word. We love him. You know, if you walk by somebody and step on their foot, you don't say, ah, get a new foot. You say, excuse me. See, so when you sin with God, you, I'm sorry, Lord. The quicker you repent, the less you reap. Because you're going to reap no matter what. Amen? But it can turn to the good. So the fear of the Lord is essential. Psalm 34, in verse 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusted in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. Whoever honors and respect him. There is no want or no lack to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is a man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Go to Proverbs 8, verse 12. I, wisdom, wisdom. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. You know how many people make covenants with evil because of money? Bring a curse on themselves? Now, I know the wealth of the sinner is laid out for the righteous, but you don't make no covenant with them. Hello? Pride and arrogance are the evil way. And the perverse mouth, I hate. Counsels mine, mine, sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign and rulers decree justice. By me, princes rule and nobles and the, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me. Enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get wisdom. Get understanding. And I'm going to close at Matthew 6. Everything is in the presence of God. Once you get in God's presence, you don't realize what's imparted in you then the Holy Spirit's got something to work with. 
So you may be walking down the street, all of a sudden the thought comes up, oh man, you know what? I need to go do this. See, the wisdom from above is gentle and pure. The wisdom from the earth is demonic. The love of money is demonic. It's its own God. And that's what the powers of darkness use. Look how many commercials out there and how much they promote. Oh, look at this jet. Yes, I just sold my soul and I sold 50,000 albums. Hollywood. Think about Hollywood. It's a Hollywood tree is what they use to take the wood from and make a wand for a witch. And think about it. Tell a vision. Tell a vision. That's called false reality. They're telling a vision that's not truth. Then they have channels to turn so you can get programmed. Opening, channeling spirits. The music industry is very effective. Matthew 6. Hallelujah. In verse 31. Matthew 6, 31. If you want to learn any more what we have, you're more than welcome. We have a, a uh, website called Eternal Library. I was brought one time to the Eternal Library brought by the Lord. And from that point on, I always desired to have a website, Eternal Library. We got about 1,600, 1,700 teachings under videos. It's called eternallibrary.org. It will blow you away. They have correspondence courses, all kinds of things. Just about anything you can ask about, there's an answer. Matthew 6, 31. Hallelujah. Therefore, do not what? Worry. Saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentile, the world seeks. But your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Not his goodness. See, there's a difference between eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which produces death, and eating from the tree of life, which produces righteousness and life. See, so you're, you hear from many people, I'm a good person. Stand before God and tell him how good you are. And he'll expose everything that you thought was good, but displeasing to him. The, the word says the righteous injustice, righteousness and justice enter the kingdom. Seek ye the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry of its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I want to encourage you for what's getting ready to happen. Stay strong in the Lord and the power of might. Stay assembled. Make sure you're getting information from above. Stop watching all of the secular stuff because they lie in constantly. And God is bringing down these de deceptive, evil riches that they hold. They're about to be collapsed. And then we're going to come into a place where we'll be going to be blessed and the world is going to go, why? In fact, this is the word talks about that uh, uh, Israel will be jealous of the Gentiles. And they'll become turned to the Lord. But you got to be in position. You got to be in position to be able to receive. Amen? You don't get in a bus unless you're in line. Praise God. Is everybody okay? Praise Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your truth, for your word. Thank you for the anointing that breaks yoke of bondage. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Lord, we ask that you prepare our hearts for communion. And let the word that's been imparted to each and every one grow and bear fruit for your glory. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.